What's going on, everybody? Y'all know who it is. Uh, I'm back, man. I've been a while. I've just been going through things. I haven't been feeling like it, but I'm back at it, man. I appreciate those who subscribed and that feedback from uh, from my last vid. I appreciate that. But uh, I wanted to talk about what happened last weekend. Weekend that just passed, matter of fact. A lot of fights. A crazy upset. Uh, big time drama with the Matisse Provo fight, which was amazing, amazing fight. Uh, let's get into that. Let's get into that one first, you know. Uh, the Lucas Matisse fight was beautiful, beautiful fight. It lived up to the hype. It could have been more action, but we had enough. I had enough action. I think it was a great fight. Absolutely fight of the year. They already t uh, taking their boxing gloves for the fight and the gear, and they sending it straight to the Hall of Fame, the Boxing Hall of Fame. But uh, I want to talk about what happened in the fight and how it go, how it went down, and how uh, Matisse pulled up the victory. Now I watched the fight like three times. I had uh, I scored it one time. I scored it twice, and then uh, the third time. Uh, I just watched it as a fan and really didn't, uh, didn't score it. But, uh, I mean, basically, Lucas Matisse did what he had to do, man. I mean, he just outboxed the guy like I knew he was. I knew it was going to go the distance. I know I didn't come up with a prediction on it. But I knew he he was going to pull up the fight and I knew he was going to box. Because if he would have brawled, he would have got knocked out. You know what I mean? He was brawling at certain times. But for the most part, that jab was killing Provo. Now, on Provo's side, I mean, he was catching Matisse with everything. And Lucas Matisse was catching him. I mean, this motherfucking uh, Matisse, I mean, Provo is one tough, tough, tough cookie to crack. I mean, he was getting hit with so many jabs, straight right hooks, body shots, and he would not... Flinch would not buckle nothing. Nothing. I mean, you got to hit this guy with a sledgehammer to knock him out. I mean, this guy's one of the toughest 140-pounder, if not the toughest 140-pounder in the division as far as taking blows. I mean, he took punches from Lucas Matisse. And everybody know that Lucas Matisse is going... Most of the time, he's knocking you out. Now, what Provo... What I didn't like about Probotnikov in the fight... It was very, very simple. I mean, he could have easily won this fight if he had a jab. He had no jab. He didn't throw any jabs. And when he did land it, it wasn't really affecting Lucas Matisse. He didn't throw enough jabs. And he he, he he needs to go back in the boxing. And somebody need to train him how to use the jab. I mean, if he gets a... If he establishes a jab and, and develops a good, good, solid jab... He will be a bigger problem than what he already is with people. I mean, people don't want to fight him because they know if you go to fight him, you're going to get hurt. You might beat him, depending on you all, but you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, he's going to Tim Bradley you, basically. He's going to get you a concussion and he's going to make sure you win the fight on a close. You, you probably going to beat him by like one or two points, you know, but that's basically what happened with, with Provo, man. I mean, he did everything right, but he just didn't have that jab, man. Like, that jab in boxing is the key to everything. You know what I mean? It really is. You know, in my opinion. You know, like I said, unless you have other other punches that will, like, will supersede that. You know, but it's always good to have a jab no matter what. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have a jab. He didn't throw it. He didn't land it. He didn't establish one. That's why he lost the fight. I mean, if he would have jabbed like Lucas Matisse was jabbing him... We would have had a different fight. I think he would have knocked out Lu Lucas Matisse if he would have stabbed the jab and boxed a little bit. But that's Provo. You know what I'm saying? He's tough. He's going to bring it every time he's going to bring it. And he's going to show you what he's made out of. You know? But shout out to Lucas Matisse. Like I said, he establishes the jab, kept him off, brawled when he had to, and boxed when he had to. And that's why he won the fight. Now, the first time I, f I scored the fight, I had it 116 to 112 for Matisse. The second time I had it 7 to 5, which is 115, 113 for Matisse. Uh, one of the judges had it a draw, 
which is kind of, mm, you kind of pushing a little bit too much. I don't think it was a draw. You know, I, I really wouldn't be mad with a draw, but at the same time, I would be like, you know, maybe uh, Matisse got robbed, maybe a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But he clearly won the fight to me. He won it eight to four. And uh, that was pretty much it, man. I mean, Lucas Matisse was taking shots too. You know what I'm saying? Both of these guys, you got to give them a ton of credit because if those guys were fighting somebody else and they were hitting each other like like that with another opponent, the fight would have not went 12 rounds. I knew it was going to go 12 rounds, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't either, you know what I'm saying? But these are two tough motherfuckers with great chins, great heart, great determination, great will. And they, they gave it all. They, they they showed it all. You know what I'm saying? But Lucas Matisse, on the other hand, was just the better boxer that night. And he's just the better boxer, period. You know what I'm saying? He boxed. He kept them off with his jab, with his right hands, his some body shots, left hooks. Now, uh, Provodnikov was just coming forward, taking, taking, and giving. You know? But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep these videos short. I'm not trying to be long with it. You know, but that's what I thought about the fight. Matisse won 116 to 112. Uh, I gave uh, Provo the 11th, the 12th round, and the 10th round. I think, something like that. The 4th, the 10th, and the 11th and 12th. That's, uh, that's four rounds, yeah. And then the second time I gave him uh, five rounds, which is was kind of pushing it a little bit too. But nevertheless... Lucas Matiste won by majority decision. It was a good fight. Now, what's next? I mean, I mean, you got to put him in there with Terrence Crawford. If he, Danny Garcia don't want to fight him, you got to put him in there with Terrence Crawford. And that's going to be a good fight. You know, I mean, Pro Crawford is already proven. You know, I'll get to that in another video. But that's the fight I want to see next. I mean, they got to make that fight. You know, there's plenty of options for both guys. 140 is retarded right now. It's retarded. You can mix and match them all day, every day. No problem. No problem. You know, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Lucas Matisse versus Provo. You know, great, great fight. Fight of the year as of now. And uh, that's it, man. That's that's all I really got to say about the fight, man. If Lucas, if Mapropo would have had a good jab and would have been establishing the jab and landing jabs, it would have been definitely a different fight. I probably would have favored Provo if he had a good jab, but he doesn't. He's just just come forward, take it. But and that's exciting too. There's nothing wrong with that. If you could, if whatever game plan and whatever style you got, if it works and you win, I'm all for it, man. As long as you win, win impressively. And fight, fight your heart out all the time, you know. Shout out to both guys, you know. But Matisse, he's the real deal, you know. He beat Provo, which is a tough guy. Every time you fight in Provo, it's going to be a tough fight for you, you know. So, uh, thanks for uh, watching, and I'll see you guys again, man. Thank you.